I hitched the boat to the back of my truck Called my friend, said let's go try our luck Said I'm sorry buddy, I can't go I'm watching the old retro bass and fishing show I call a girl that's an angler and said Don't go fishing, now go out of my head Said I'm sorry honey, I can't go I'm watching the old retro bass and fishing show the Retro Bass and Fishing Show, brought to you by Texas Provisions, inspired by Texas. Schooling bass to me have always been a bit of a mystery. Uh, growing up on the Chesapeake Bay, we fished for schooling fish a ton, and I got pretty adept at catching them. You know, you could sometimes get them up on top, but more often it was with jigging tight baits for striped bass in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay. That being said, fishing the Potomac River, I never saw a single schooling bass. So when I got to Texas and got on some of the local lakes here, it was kind of shocking to see some bass busting in the middle of the lake. I think my problem early on was I was thinking too much like a shallow water bass angler rather than a deep jigging saltwater angler. So today on the water, I definitely got back to my roots started fishing it a little bit deeper than I usually do for these bass, and we got into a few good fish before we had to get off the water. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin, and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from the golden era of bass fishing. Stick around, consider subscribing, and hit that bell icon, otherwise you won't know when we post a new video like this one. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today we're fishing at Old School for some schooling bass. So today Brandon and I have a few hours on the lake. Fish are schooled up in about 20 to 25 feet of water and we've got a boatload of Old School schooling bass baits. First one of the day. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning. <laughs> Holy smokes. Nice fish, man. Fish breaking. Ooh -hoo. Let's go. Dude. Oh my god. Oh god. There's one. Ho 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 ho. Got one. Look at that. <laughs> it's not often, but <laughs> Brand, oh, oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, I'll talk in a minute. Holy <laughs> mackerel. Dude, that's a donkey. Oh. oh, oh, that's a nice fish. Come here, buddy. Oh. <laughs> Not as big as I thought, but a nice fish. Nonetheless, holy mackerel. It's not often Brandon guilts me into fishing with a retro lure, but he got one on a basically a spinner like this. I decided to pick up my Uncle Josh Spinrite 
Check out that guy. Nice school and fish. Whew. <laughs> nice catch. <laughs> All right, let's let him go. Come on. Oh. There are some nice fish in here. Man. It's kind of cool when the two pounders start schooling like this. Holy mackerel. <laughs> they are busting all around us right now. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's one. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, another nice fish, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good thing I got the drag going today. Holy mackerel. <laughs> oh, looky there. Looky there. Oh, pretty fish. Another old school schooling fish. <laughs> oh, nice. Look at that guy. So these are some chunks. We were throwing some top water for these guys earlier, and honestly, they weren't. Brandon got one, but they were not eaten nearly as well as we started busting out the old spinners. Brandon's fishing with a boonerang. I'm fishing with a uh, Uncle Josh spin right. Nice fish. This rod. Woo! Hello. Look at this. Come here. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> nice, man. Got it on the way down. It was toying with it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Woo. Come on, girl. Oh, he just got angry. Oh. Here we go. The old jig and spoon. All right, there we are. Nice little uh, one pounder, one and a half pounder on the spin right. <laughs> Let's get back in there. Just getting back from a trip on the lake. We weren't sure what kind of show we were gonna be filming today other than an old school tackle show. We got on the lake after throwing some baits unsuccessfully up shallow. We happened to notice a bunch of fish busting in the center of the lake in about 20 to 25 feet of water. We headed out there with our schooling bass lures and we got into some real nice fish. When it comes to schooling bass, if at all possible, I will get them on top. It's just the funnest way to fish. And some of the uh, recent topwater baits that I've been throwing for school and bass. A couple different new old baits I've been throwing for school and bass on top. And here's one of them. This is from Head and this is called the Dying Flutter. It 
It looks sort of like a Zara Spook puppy or a jumping minnow, but actually because of the weight of this thing, it does slowly sink down in the water column. This is actually a pretty cool bait. I've caught some nice fish on this. Not today, but in the future, I'm definitely gonna have this thing handy when we see school and bass. Another bait I just picked up from the classic Texas company called Whopper Stopper is this, and this is called the Throbber. And honestly, this is probably one of the coolest topwater baits I've ever seen. So it looks just like a standard chugger, right? Sort of like that pop bar with the original lip. But inside, it's got a weight and a spring. And when you chug it, it throbs. I don't know if you all can see that thing moving, but every time you do it, this whole bait literally vibrates. There you go. I did not throw this today, but your darn tooth, and this is definitely going to be on my rods next time I'm out there. I like the color of it. Um, I wish it had a little bit less of a, a bottom lip, to be honest with you, but this throbbing thing, I think that could be really cool. And then the top water bait that we did catch a fish on today is this one. This is an old school bait from Cotton Cordell called the Chopstick. It's like a chunkier version of a pop R. It's got a nice concave uh, mouth there. Clear, well-weighted. Switched out the hooks, by the way. Uh, this is actually a pretty cool bait. So Brandon was getting ready to reach for something new school and we handed him this bait on my vintage Abu Garcia combo. And this is what we got the first fish of the day on. But when you think of baits for schooling bass on top, you can't even start the discussion without mentioning this bait. The clear head and torpedo production today, but they're definitely old school. I'm glad they still make them. And absolutely, I still fish both of these baits. I don't know what it is, by the way, about the clear color for schooling baits. I mean, I'm assuming that the bass we were seeing today were feeding on really small rain bait. And most lures of a normal color just look too big. Well, I think the nice thing about a clear bait is it still shows up in the water, but I think it probably looks more like a sliver of a bait than a big bait. And I think overall that's probably why those schooling bass tend to like clear a whole lot. And another in the propeller sort of torpedo style that I haven't thrown yet, but I'm getting ready to, is this one. This is a bomber uh, torpedo minnow. And it's almost in that smiling minnow uh, natural pattern. This one's sort of clear with a silver. And that'll totally catch a schooling bass. But without a doubt, the baits that we caught the biggest and the most fish on today were the classic tail spinners, just like the man's little George. So here is a man's little George. I actually had this thing buried in my tackle box, so I didn't actually get to fish with it today, unfortunately. But this is the classic tail spinner from man's. Tom Mann invented this bait in 1965, and it's been smoking school and bass ever since. It's actually a quite a simple, ingenious bait. All it is, it's a lead head painted. I got a feeling this one is probably three quarters of an ounce. It's got a straight um, wire on the back end and a spinner. And most of them come with a single treble hook and there's a few little variations that I'll show you in a minute. Now you can fish this bait in a number of different ways, but the reason this thing is so deadly on, you can fish this bait in a number of different ways, but I think the reason it's so deadly on schooling bass is that it's small and subtle, it sinks quick, which is good when those fish do those level changes. And because of the weight of this thing, you can cast this thing a country mile and reach those breaking fish that you might not be able to reach with another bait like a popper. So I didn't fish with the man's little George, but we had two other versions of the tail spinners rigged up. So the first lure that I had rigged up and that Brandon was throwing all day was this. This is from Boone Bay Company and it's called the Boone Orang. I have fished with this thing before and I like this bait. This has actually got one really cool and unique feature on this tail spinner. I also love, by the way, the fact the packaging. Check this thing out. This is, I, I'll put some pictures on Instagram, don't worry. This is actually super, super sweet. Check this thing out. Awesome packaging on the back as well. Uh, I've got a few of these new old stock that I'm not gonna open 
but I have opened a few of them and here is one. So at first glance you might think this is just sort of a knockoff of the Little George. Standard lead head, a uh, single spinner on a wire tail, and a treble hook. But there is one pretty cool difference, and it's this. The hook itself actually comes out of the lead, and the theory is, is if a big bass bites this thing and starts shaking his head, normally this weight would be bouncing all around, and there's a pretty good chance the fish is going to be able to spit that hook. With the boonerang, however, when the fish starts shaking, phew, this dude just slides up and down the line, and you've got this treble hook, which is seated well in the corner of the fish's mouth. Now, the one thing is this treble hook is, um, it ain't a gamagatsu, so it's a little bit uh, to be desired, and I think I'm going to figure out a way to switch out the hook on this bait. But overall, I love the weight of this thing. I do love that breakaway feature. And we definitely got a few nice fish on the boonerang. Uncle Josh has been breaking my heart a lot lately. But this is actually a cool bait that I was able to pick up about a dozen of online. And this is called the Uncle Josh Spin Right. So this is pretty much like a mini man's Little George. It's got a super tiny head on it. Nice thin sort of a concave shape to it, a uh, single spinner, again, on a wire tail, and a treble hook, which I definitely replaced. So I'm trying to think how big the old spin right is here. So this is model uh, 781, and it's a half an ounce. So this is a half an ounce bait. It actually almost looks like it should be less, but it's, you know, probably lead. Um, this thing casted a country mile. Okay, so this is the original spin right. It says a cast like a bullet gets way out there. A spinner blade flashes and vibrates, attracts fishes in clear and murky water. Doesn't mention anything about school and bass, but does say it works for bass, panfish, pike, and trout. Okay, so the spin right uh, is a year round lure for casting, spinning, jigging, and trolling. I don't know if I'd troll with this, by the way. <laughs> the blade is always in motion and spins as it attracts fishes, even in free fall. Even in free fall, this works. It's kind of like how I fished it all day. Uh, for a change of pace in deep water, stop several times during the retrieve and let the spin rate fall several feet. Uh, raise the rod tip and continue a fast retrieve. For bottom fishing, uh, jump the spin rate off the bottom by whipping the tip upward and then reel in the slack in between pumps. To jig, uh, use straight up and down movement. By the way, fish had to be actively busting for us to get bites. If they were underwater, even for a minute, it was almost like they're just their jaws shut. So the way that I got most of my fish with the old spin right is I would cast it out into that active school and I would try to count it down to get it to about 10 to 12 feet. That looked like where most of the fish were showing up on the old Tom Man Super 60. So once it would get there, I would start jigging it. And some of the fish I got early, but some of them I actually got a lot closer to the boat. So it really was no rhyme or reason as to how far away from the boat. Um, one of the things I liked about the spin right is the fact that it definitely feels a little more finesse than that boonerang or a man's little George. And I think for these fish that were keying in on some micro bait, this thing really did fit the bill. I was throwing this, even though it's half an ounce, I was throwing this on my spinning combo, and that actually worked out just fine. Uh, the only trick is when I did get a few fish, I thought they were a little bit bigger than they were. Um, but this is a bait I'm really glad I've got in my tackle box, and I'm definitely going to keep throwing it. Oh, and almost forgot to mention, I don't know if y'all noticed, but Brandon was sporting the first ever uh, in the Retro Bassin line from Texas Provisions. Central Texas Fishing Club hat. If you want to check this hat out, we've actually got a couple new additions to the old Retro Bassin line as well. Um, go to txprovisions.com. That is txprovisions.com. In the comment section down below, let me know what is your favorite bait for school and bass. I've got a feeling these fish are going to be schooling up in these power plant lakes for a little while to come. And if there's any tips y'all have, I would love to try them out next time we get on the water. 
Until next time, stay in school and definitely fish it old school. Wait, that's like too many schools. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bash.